Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Choose Scent video for this week, for the week of November 19th to the 25th. Um, hopefully, all of you had a happy Thanksgiving, whether it was spending with friends, family, or whatever it might be. Hopefully, you guys had a good and enjoyable Thanksgiving. And hopefully, you guys are, you know, basically getting the gift you want to try to get for Black Friday and everything like that. Hopefully you were lucky to find that gift if you want to, although I'm sure, <clears throat> excuse me, some of you are going to be waiting to see what um, Cyber Monday might be and everything like that. But anyway, we got uh, four stories to cover, including a lawsuit Sony seems to be, Sony could be facing, um, to be exact though. Um, comments made in regards to the Switch 2, especially surrounding the um, DLSS and everything like that. Um, reports about KOTAR Remake um, supposedly being cancelled, however it does seem, however a comment from Jason Schreier may have said otherwise though, and the announcement that The Last of Us Part 2, or a remastered version, is going to be making its way over to the PS5. If you're interested in where I got the source of these information, links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. But before we get started, I like to do what I like to call is the quick my two cents stories that kind of caught my attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details and all. The first one has to do with a report that comes out that it seems to be that this was mentioned on an employee's LinkedIn page that it seems that Borderlands 4 and Tiny Tina Wonderlands 2 could be in the works or some or something like that. Now granted, nothing has been confirmed at this time from either 2K or Gearbox at this very moment. So we'll have to wait and see if this announcement is um, true or anything like that. But still, it wouldn't be against another idea of another Borderlands or a sequel to Tiny Tina Wonderlands 2. I thought that was kind of fun and interesting, Tiny Tina Wonderlands, although some people may have different um, views on that one. I mean, it did add some new elements to the Borderlands formula, but at the end of the day, it's still a Borderlands game with the medieval settings and everything like that. But I would be, wouldn't be down with the idea of a Tiny Tina Wonderlands 2 or Borderlands 4. We also learned that Hateki Kamara believes that basically um, thinks that the franchise Bayonetta will continue even though he has now stepped down from Platinum and everything like that. It was sort of a based off a YouTube video that um, he recently did and everything. Um, it would be interesting to see where the franchise is going to go once now that Chimera has basically, if I'm saying this thing correctly, has basically left Platinum and everything. So it will be interesting to see how things are going, to, how that franchise will continue. But I mean, it probably will continue even without him. Whether that's a good or bad thing, that remains to be seen at this time. Um, we also learned that supposedly Apollo Justice Ace Eternity Trilogy that's going to be coming to multiple systems, including the Nintendo Switch, it does seem to be that it will be getting a physical version here in the US or North America. Now, in the past, we've seen, you know, some games that although get a physical version, usually and usually sometimes are either either A through like, you know, limited run games, or B, we have this sort of situation where it's basically, you know, if you want to get the physical version, you may have to order through, you know, Play Asia and everything like that. So to see it actually gonna get a physical version in North America is certainly nice. What we don't know if it's going to be the whole games in the cart or anything like that referred to the Switch version or not. So we'll have to see um, how this one is going to um, play out and everything like that. We also learned that supposedly Nintendo is aware of a bug supposedly in the Super Mario RPG and this has to do with the paratrooper. It has to do I think with a little mini game, uh, especially when you get to the area known as Land's Ends and all. Um, supposedly Nintendo is aware of that and they said they'll have a patch supposedly out by December though. Um, so, I mean, interesting that they've spotted this though right now. I mean, it's a little unfortunate they didn't spot it earlier on, but glad that they are supposedly going to address it. Hopefully this patch will address if there are people who are having concerns or running into this problem or anything like that. We also learned that Borderlands 3 from the Nintendo Switch is getting a new update. It will mostly add like optimization and I think I think performance optimization and other stuff as well. Certainly nice to see that game is getting some updates on the Switch. I've been trying it out on the Nintendo Switch and while 
I won't say, I mean, it is certainly one of those impossible switch ports, though. There's no denying the fact that compromises were made in order to get this game um, running on the Nintendo Switch and all. And last but not least, we have a report coming out that a former GTA um, developer has made sort of a claim about a canceled project called Agent, but has now basically removed his post, both supposedly because Rockstar told him to remove it and everything like that. So it's kind of interesting that they asked him to remove this post, though. It was supposed to be a PlayStation exclusive back then and everything like that. So sort of sort of kind of makes you kind of wonder what more about this game that we never um, got to solve or anything like that. <clears throat> and last but not least, and I only have one in the movie and TV show, and this has to do with Sur Suzanne Sarandon, if I'm saying her name correctly, and Melissa Barra, B-A-R-R-E-R-A. -R -R -E -R Apparently, they have been dropped from, one has been dropped from the upcoming screen movie, and the other one has been dropped by her agency. And mostly this has to do with comments that were made because of the whole, you know, Israeli Hamas situation that we're seeing on TV and this had to do with certain comments that have came out from basically as could be perceived depending on how you look at it as anti-Semite in any certain way and after reading some of the comments I can kind of see why some folks might view that as an anti-Semite comment. Now it is true that they are entitled to their opinion and that is basically true I won't argue against that but it's also true at the same time that their agency and studios um, could drop them if they feel that this comment will add too much controversy or certainly take tensions away. I mean, the whole situation, what's going on in Israel and Gaza has really, uh, let's just say, it has definitely exposed a lot of folks making comments that, unfortunately, you could one part could be viewed as anti-Semitic and another part can be viewed as Islamophobia as well. And so it, I, it's a very touchy um, situation, at least with that whole thing um, playing out, going on in the Middle East and everything like that. <clears throat> okay, with the Quick My Chief Scent part now done, along with the movie and TV show part, we'll get started with our first story. And this one has to do with the announcement of The Last of Us Part Two getting, you know, um, the remaster or remake treatment that will be imported over to the PS5. Now, The Last of Us, um, Last of Us Part Two, was considered by some to be kind of a controversial game. Some of it had to do with some of the story elements, though, and not everyone was a fan of it, though. Despite that, the game did do very well in terms of sales and everything. Um, like that, and with the success of The Last of Us um, TV show on Max, which Hopefully, season two will get started now with the whole writer strike and the actor strike supposedly in the rearview mirror and everything like that. But earlier this year, though, we did see, and I believe it was this year, The Last of Us Part 1 get a remastered treatment being ported over to the PS5 and everything. A lot of folks were kind of controversial. A lot of folks were, did, were not, or, <clears throat> excuse me, not everyone was pleased with this announcement considering that we already had The Last of Us remaster come out on the ps4 and everything so not everyone was pleased um with this announcement despite that that game did sell um very well on the ps5 though and some people contribute that to basically you know the last of us um tv show on max and everything so the fact that they are making this announcement isn't really as surprising to a lot of folks though but i will can see why it's not everyone is pleased with this announcement or anything like that so the announcement supposedly leaked early and everything like that but now it has popped up as part of on playstation's um official blog and everything um, basically, they're saying, you know, that the game will come out on the PS5 on January 19th, 2024. Um, they do mention, basically, um, what those who will get, like, you know, the remasters thing, what they will expect. I mean, they have, like, the, the, the sort of the limited edition that they have, though, for the console. Um, they have sort of this champion trading cards. Um, in terms of what the features will include, they talk about graphical enhancement, lost levels, full um, full dual sense, wireless control integration, new outfit, guitar free. Um, basically, they'll have the exclusive roguelike survivor mode called The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered No Returns. Um, they also point out 
Um, basically, players that have purchased The Last of Us Part 2 on the PS4 can upgrade to the PS5 version for $10. Um, I, mo most of you may remember the controversy of surrounding that um, when we had, I think, was Horizon Forbidden West with that kind of situation, that kind of... Well, let's just say not everyone was a fan of that um, announcement, um, to be exact. And in terms of basically the comments, though, um, there are some that basically the, the response, let's just say, um, it has been kind of mixed, though. For some, they are ex like this, um, basically, though, but there are those who don't exactly like it as well, though. I mean, I can understand maybe if this is the first time you've ever played The Last of Us or anything like that, or the PS5 is your very first system and everything like that, I might see a reason to pick this up, but for those who've already played the game, um, I can see why this could be a hard sell for some folks out there who don't want to spend, you know, the, the money to basically, you know, buy this and everything like that. But as far as, oh, what, as far as what I think will happen is that I do think that odds are the game will probably do very well, considering the first one did very well and that, I think, was off the success of the TV show. I have a feeling there's a very good chance The Last of Us um, Part 2 Remaster will probably get this, will probably find the same success as well. I could be wrong on that, but I think I'm sort of leaning towards that kind of situation. Um, happening and all so it some folks may be happy with this announcement some are not um, to be exact though but either way it is happening maybe this is sort of a way to set up for the last of us part three or maybe or hopefully maybe Naughty Dog will work on a new IP or something like that but either case this announcement to me isn't really that surprising so overall I would say like I said not a surprising announcement I'm not, and I'm not surprised that some people are mixed on this announcement. I can understand why some people are pleased to be picking this game up, but I can understand why some folks are not pleased of, of Naughty Dog and Sony making this kind of announcement. And I can understand why some of this brings up the whole question about Sony's handling of in terms of their first party studios and everything like that. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with the whole KOTOR remake uh, situation that seems to have happened and everything like that, with, uh, with a new report coming from um, Jason Stryer and all. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the situation surrounding the KOTAR or Knights of the Old Republic um, remake. Now, back in 2021, there was a teaser trailer showing off basically that of a remake of the classic Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic being handled by Asperity, which, which is part of um, Embracer Group and all. Um, basically, this was the same studio that has done mostly remasters of several different games um, and sort of modernized them and bring them over to current consoles and so forth. However, there were later reports seemed to indicate that whatever, whatever vertical slice was being shown to Sony and Lucasfilm and Disney did not seem to impress those folks and apparently Asperit was basically taken off the project um, entirely and supposedly two of the staff members, if I think it was two, I'm not 100% sure, were later fired basically. And supposedly it was then handed over to Saber Interactive. And since then there have been rumblings here and there about the possibility of the game being in trouble and everything like that. One recent report was pointing towards that the trailer, the announcement trailer was taken down. However, Sony later supposedly came out and later said it was had to do with a expired music license issue and everything like that. Well, <clears throat> a recent report by Giant Bomb's um, Jeff Grubb, who has somewhat of an interesting history, seems to indicate that the game may be actually dead. However, this was later followed up by a comment made by um, Bloomberg's um, Jason Schreier. Uh, the first one we'll start off is the comment made by um, Jeff Grubb, and he's making the claim that the game's not currently in development, though. Here's what he had to say. I said, quote, I noticed that anything I said to this became a headline. So 
That is my only comment. The executive said last week and asked about how he's feeling about the remake, which was pre- previously confirmed, um, previously confirmed to be in development and breaks his own asperity saber. Um, um, interactive, though, um, he this is had to do with Jeff um, talking about it. He said, um, "Quote." Um, the rumor was that it got taken away from Asperity, which had done the Star Wars remasters and moved over to Saber Interactive, Grubb said. There have been rumors that it has moved elsewhere since then. I just want to clear it up that this game is not being worked on right now, full stop. The game um, is not being worked on in any way at any um, studio. He also um, also, later would confirm on this article for Video Game Chronicles that says, just to 100% confirm, this game is not being worked on right now. Grubbs reiterated. He said he's heard echoes that Sony wants absolutely nothing to do with this going forward. Following this report came out, though, um, Jason Schreier weighed in and he had sort of a different statement, um, basically, than what Jeff Grubbs is saying, though. Um, here's what he had to say Quote, This is from Insiders Gaming, though. The Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake is reportedly still in development at Saber Interactive, despite claims it's currently not being worked on. The news comes via Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, who shot down recent comments from Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubbs that the game is not being worked on right now. Um, Schreier first took to Reset Era and said, Is it alive and will it ever actually come out are two very different questions. A third is, if it does come out, what will it actually look like? He continues, That said, I've talked to two people at Saber Interactive who both said they're still currently working on it, so I don't believe that the comment that this game isn't being worked on in the game isn't being worked on in any way right now is true. Taking to Twitter to collaborate, though, here's what he has to say. Quote, or, or X, formerly known as Twitter. I still refer to it as Twitter and everything like that. Um, can't say whether the KOTAR remake will ever actually come out, but yes, two people from Saber Interactive tell me they're still working on it, despite recent rumors that nobody is working on um, the game and everything. Game and everything. So basically, we have um, two conflicting reports on this, though. Jeff Grubb from Giant Bomb is saying it isn't. Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, it is, though. And I will say that um, whatever the case is, if even if this game is being worked on and what Jason Schreier is saying is true, which I'm kind of leaning towards him because he has a good history of getting things um, spot on with a lot of things, though, more than Jeff Grubbs, although Jeff Grubbs isn't always wrong all the time or anything like that. He does definitely hit the mark sometime, but I would say I kind of am leaning towards a more towards Jason Schreier, though. But even if that is the case, though, um, even if it is true that the game is still working on, I expect that it's probably going to be a while until we see um, this Knights of the Old Republic remake, if that is the case. But on the other hand, it is possible that Embracer Group may want to pull the plug on this game. I mean, right now, Embracer Group is not, certainly, is not in a very good spot at this moment because ever since that whole deal worth two billion dollars that they had with like the Saudi firm fell apart um they have been well they've been letting a lot of people go and really have been closing shutting down some studios and canceling some games and everything like that so I wouldn't be surprised if Embracer Group decides to do that with this Knights of the Old Republic um remake but time will ultimately tell if we'll ever this game will ever see the light of day or anything um like that and we'll have to wait to see who's right, whether it was um, Jeff Grubbs or Jason Strider. So overall, apparently we're getting two different reports. Jeff Grubb is saying the game is dead, though. Jason Strider is saying, no, people I've been hearing are saying the game is still alive. It's still being worked on. What, whichever turns out to be true, um, that remains to be seen in everything. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one has to do with the Switches 2, particularly with a with, particularly with the DLSS, as there could be a certain feature or a certain part of that DL, DLSS that may not be in the Switch 2, at least according to what Digital Foundry has been saying lately, though, or what they've been hearing. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back.
Okay, and we are back with part three of my My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're gonna be taking a look at an interesting comment my, made by the folks over at Digital Foundry. And this had to do with, in regards of the Nintendo Switch 2, or Switch 2, or Switch Accenture, as you wanna call it, as there has been some reports about the possibility of certain features being taken out, at least in regards to the DLSS. Now, for those who are not familiar with that, DLSS, I think, believe is, at least according to what NVIDIA is referring to, it's called Deep Learning Super Sampling. Supposedly, it's this new technology for them that would help render, I think, games with lower resolution, help them in some ways with higher resolution to helping with the frame rate and certain things and certain stuff like that. For the most part, that stuff has been usually, mostly we've seen used on PC gaming to be exact though. However, we have seen some, supposedly some samples of it has was used. Like for example, I think Nintendo Switch Sports did use um, supposedly a software similar to what AMD has and everything like that for their games. So we're starting to see it somewhat make its way to consoles and everything like that. Now, in the past, there has been talks about the possibility of the Switch successor using NVIDIA's DLSS. And reports, I believe, last month, or I think maybe a couple months ago, did indicate during Gamescom that there was supposedly a behind the scenes look for developers to take a look at the Nintendo Switch 2 or Switch successor, as it seemed to indicate that it was using DLS at DLSS. And supposedly one of the demos they showed off was the Matrix Awakening demo that ran on Unreal Engine 5 and all. Well, during a direct Digital Foundry Direct weekly podcast, some questions were asked about DLSS, and it certainly has caught some people's attention, at least given the response that was made in terms of this question that was asked. In an article from Game Rant, um, it reads about, it turns about what chip it might, it talks about this whole situation. It mentions about basically, um, basically saying, um, basically pointing out that it could be based off of the, you know, basically the NVIDIA T234 SOC system on a chip um, that base and all that stuff. It also points out that it comes with um, deep learning acceleration, DLA, and everything like that. Now, further along the article, um, it points out basically some of the comments uh, about a comment that was made by Digital Foundry. It points out during a, a number, November 20th episode of Digital Foundry Direct Podcast, the episode saw Digital Foundry cast field a question about the chance of Switch 2 being a powerful traditional home console instead of a hybrid device similar to its predecessor. For me though, I'm leaning towards they're probably gonna stick with the whole hybrid console handheld concept and everything like that. Anyway, at least that's my take though. But anyway, moving on. While everyone agrees that scenario is unlikely, Leather Better, if I'm saying his name correctly though, um, editor Richard um, Lead Better, elaborated that on elaborated on that point by stating multiple sources he's recently consulted claimed the next Nintendo console won't have DLA equipment um, chip. Um, that Amish will significantly in in a build inability the console's ability to make use of modern graphic technology like DLSS, which tend to rely on artificial intelligence. It still won't make such solutions impossible as underlined by the widespread reports that Nintendo showcased the Switch 2 running Breath of the Wild at 4K in 60 frames per second in 4K behind closed doors at Gamescom 2023, largely thanks to DLSS support. However, by omitting a specialized, specialized unit dedicated to AI calculation for its next console, the company would make technology like DLSS much more computerized, expensive, Leather better, leather Lead Better said. Um, elaborated on, on this concrete implication of such a mood, uh, such a move though, the insider said that a DLA free chip wouldn't be suitable for handling DLSS to up scale graphics beyond 1080p or possibly 1440p depending on a given game um, overall given games overall level of graphical fidelity without a specialized unit dedicated to ai comp components dlss processing would have to be handled by the console cpu instead of being effectively free as leather lead better put it 
I'm having a hard time saying his name. Um, under the highlights for Game Rant, they also point out that the Switch, um, Switch 2 should still support DLSS upscaling even without DLA, but likely not beyond 1440p. Now, it is worth pointing out though that nothing has been confirmed um, at this time. Nintendo has not 100% confirmed or excuse me, the existence of the Switch successor, although they have been, they have a history of being coy or kind of twisting the words a little bit of it though. Um, and it is also possible, there's also the possibility that there may be different development kits of this Switch successor out there that may or may not um, have this component or certain or anything like that. But still, if what Digital Foundry is saying is true, then I'm not completely surprised by this but would be somewhat disappointed though because um for i i remember hearing how when the tegra x1 chip was powering the nintendo switch i supposedly i think they made some changes and adjustments to basically get it to run on the hardware that nintendo was aiming for and everything like that supposedly looking somewhat different than what the Tegra X1 would originally look like. So it is possible that they may there may be certain features or anything change should they you still use DLSS um, for this um, you know the switch successor and everything like that. But again, um, it, it would be a little bit unfortunate because I mean obviously Nintendo is aiming for something different when it comes to graphics compared to what we see with you know the Xbox series X and S or the PS5. Um, for that matter. But, I mean, again, there's nothing officially confirmed this time. So, for now, I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach, though, but that would be really interesting if this rumor, if what Digital Foundry is saying is actually true and all. So, over, overall, I would say very interesting to hear this, though. Um, again, we don't have any official confirmation, so it's, like, too early to tell or anything like that, but... It is kind of fascinating if this turns out to be um, true and everything. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part. And this one has to do with supposedly a lawsuit Sony is going to is basically dealing with recently. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a lawsuit that Sony seems to be have gotten itself into, or at the very least, it seems to be moving forward. Now, lawsuits are in the gaming world or anything like that isn't really anything new. And we've seen many different types of lawsuits. We've seen some over, you know, the whole violent video game issue and everything like that. To even, I remember one where... Several consumers sued, you know, Gearbox over their claim that they lied to them about aliens, colonial marines, to even ones we saw played out during the whole Microsoft buying um, Activision Blizzard, where a group of gamers supposedly are suing to block that deal from going through, although obviously that didn't happen, the deal, and Microsoft eventually now owns Activision Blizzard and everything like that. Well, this latest one seems to indicate that a group of consumers, at least in the UK, are suing Sony supposedly over what they claim is a anti-consumer practice and everything like that. The article comes from IGN, and this is what they had to say. Quote, <clears throat> excuse me, a London tribunal, tribunal is allowing a lawsuit that could cost Sony up to $7.9 billion to move forward, according to Rory herself. The lawsuit, which was filed last year, alleged that Sony is abusing its position as the main seller of digital games on the PlayStation Store by charging a 30% commission to developers and publishers. As a result, the lawsuit claimed PlayStation is overcharging customers for digital games and DLC. Sony's lawyers attempt to get the lawsuit thrown out, but the tribunal is allowing it to continue a bit with the sub or with a condition that people who made who made PlayStation Store purchase after the case was filed in 2022 should be removed from the cl climate, climate claim, class suit or everything like that. Uh, one, a consumer rights advocate brought forth the lawsuit in a website dedicated to the lawsuit. Um, the FA page, FAQ page argued um, that since at least August 2016, 
Um, this is what they had to say, quote, Sony has been exploiting its U.S. consumers by charging them too much for PlayStation digital games and in-game content via its control over the entire PlayStation ecosystem, the Patriot, calling it anti-competitive. Um, this person said when announced the lawsuit last year, gaming is now the biggest en entertainment industry in the U.K. ahead of TV, videos, and music, and many vulnerable people rely on gaming for community and connection. The action of Sony is costing millions of people who can't afford it, particularly when we're in the midst of a cost of living crisis and the consumer purse is being squeezed like never before. The lawsuit reference to the 30% commission that Sony takes has previously been brought up in other legal challenges, most notably in the epic lawsuit against Apple where Fortnite maker accused Apple of charging an app store tax to anyone who wants to do business. However, the judge ruled in favor of Apple. So um, it will be very interesting to see how this um, lawsuit plays out and everything like that. If this allegation is true against Sony, then yeah, it is a very um, scummy move and everything like that, especially if it is an anti-consumer practice um, indeed that Sony is pulling. On the other hand, it is also possible that Sony may choose to try to settle this out of court and get rid of, move on from this case um, as quickly as possible. I mean, again, we've seen this happen before in the past. I mean, I point to Alien Colonial Marines as a one example of a, of a situation where they settle that one out of court. So it wouldn't surprise me if this one does get um, settled out of court. But We'll see how far this um, case in the UK goes, and it'll be interesting to see if we see something similar, I mean, here in the US, and whether that um, goes, to be exact. And as far as their argument they're making, well, they do point out how Epic did try to do that against Apple, but Epic, but, App, but, but they ruled in favor of Apple and everything like that. Although that is just two companies, you know, going at each other and everything. So overall, I would say very interesting to see this um, case not blocked and all, and it'll be very interesting to see how far this case goes and whether or not um, Sony decides that they want to settle this lawsuit out of court or not. So we'll just have to see how this whole thing um, plays out and all. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video um, for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about them announcing The Last of Us um, Part 2, you know, remaster and remake? Are you glad that they made this announcement? Do you, are you glad, are you going to pick this game up? Or do you think it was kind of stupid for them to do a remaster or remake of this game? And do you think it still falls into the criticism towards, you know, ranging from Naughty Dog only doing like these remasters or remake to... Um, Sony's lack of first party support or their handling of least first party games though. What are your thoughts about this whole situation surrounding KOTOR remake? Do you think Jeff Grubb is right in terms of the fact that the game is pretty much not being worked on or is pretty much dead? Or do you think Jason Schreier from Bloomberg is right saying that he's been hearing that it's not exactly as dead as what Jeff Grubb is making the claim that it is? What are your thoughts about Digital Foundry's recent comments about um, DLSS on the possible Switch successor and everything like that? Do you think this is somewhat of a concern in any way? Do you think or do you don't think it's as big of a deal as some out there might claim it is? And what are your thoughts about this lawsuit being filed against Sony and everything like that? Do you think the lawsuit has grounds in any way? Do you think Sony is engaging in any kind of anti-consumer practice? Or do you expect the case, this lawsuit to either be tossed out, or do you expect that it will probably be they're going to try to Sony's going to try to sell this out of court as quickly as possible? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon or Steam Labs. Links will be in the description of this video, so you'll be watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then.